Absolutely. Enough already is the cry that I'm hearing everywhere in Britain. Uh, this is vastly exaggerated, vastly expensive, and vastly unwarranted. Uh, you can only have these kind of ceremonial funerals for someone around whom there is a national consensus, as there was upon the death of Mr. Churchill as the war leader, uh, without whom and his unlikely ally in the Red Army, uh, we would have been conducting this interview in German. And to ask the British public to spend millions of pounds when we're bankrupt and muffling the very chimes of Big Ben themselves, simply unacceptable. The, the Prime Minister has said, as I'm sure you've, you've heard him say, that it would be dishonourable of Britain not to honour the woman who was the first female Prime Minister and the longest serving Prime Minister for 150 years. Well, uh, she was a woman prime minister, but she acted like the most wicked of men. There was nothing uh, womanly about her. She did nothing for women in politics or women in the society beyond creating endless misery amongst millions of working class women. Well, was she not? Was she not a role, men, a role model? Many women I've heard on TV in the last week saying that just the fact that she was a woman in the top political job gave them the strength to pursue uh, high-minded careers. Well, uh, she was Dracula so far as uh, millions of women and men in our country uh, were concerned, and that's a feeling that is abroad in the country and is beginning to be reflected. For example, the very few opportunities that British people had to opine on this. Uh, one of them was to buy a, a record, a single, called Ding Dong, The Witch is Dead, and they bought it in huge numbers. Um, so the British people have not been consulted. They don't like her. Millions uh, like her, but tens of millions do not. They didn't like her when she was alive, and they don't want to pay for her funeral now that she's dead. So uh, it's, is it the money that's really bugging you about this? No, though that is a particularly grotesque juxtaposition, and our pensioners are dying of the cold. Uh, but the real uh, thing is that we're still living under Thatcherism. All her heirs and successors have been Thatcherites, including the Labour ones. And we have to bury Thatcherism along with Thatcher. That's why I'm fighting this fight. You're presumably not in favour of a statue to her in Trafalgar Square. Well, uh, the, it wouldn't be just the pigeons that would be despoiling that. Uh, I would strongly urge them not to erect a statue to Margaret Thatcher. Perhaps a frieze along the walls of Trafalgar Square depicting all the different communities at home and abroad that were to suffer by her. That might be more appropriate. Some people obviously point back to those, uh, the heyday of uh, Margaret Thatcher and the time at which she came to power and said Britain was in a desperate state, we needed a strong leader, and she was that person, rightly or wrongly. She was strong because the men around her uh, were on their following her orders. And as for the state of Britain, in the 1960s and 70s, Britain had a society. Mrs Thatcher claimed that society didn't exist, and that mentality that right-wing, uh, neoliberal, neoconservative mentality is what has ruined the world. You seem to, to quite happily lump uh, Mrs Thatcher and Mr Blair in, in the same terms of condemnation. Well, uh, I, I hated Margaret Thatcher what seemed like all of my life, since I was a teenager, since she stole the school milk that used to be given freely to poor children, one of whom I at one time was. Well, she didn't, she didn't really steal it, Mr Galloway, did she? She, she was responsible for education and, and uh, cost-cutting had to be brought in. She herself said that she didn't like doing that because of the opprobrium it attracted. Well, you can put it that way. I'll put it in my way. She snatched the milk from the hands of poor primary school children in Britain. And I was once one of those for whom that milk made the difference between breakfast and no breakfast. You, you and suffered you period. suffered as a result of losing that milk, Mr. No, no, no. I had left uh, school by then, but the children who came after me suffered. Now, you call it cost-cutting. I call it stealing. That'll just be a difference of our perspective. But the uh, reality is that it uh, was a better place in the 1960s and the 1970s. It was a community. It was a society. And it had given up the role of empire in the world, by and large. 
But Mrs. Thatcher was the first of the British Prime Ministers to try and restore us to that uh, status. But I was going to say, I hated Margaret Thatcher, and I thought I could hate no Prime Minister more until Mr. Tony Blair came along.